Hi, this is going to be an in-depth walkthrough of 3D Screen Pro, a pack of presets I've made for DaVinci Resolve that you can drag and drop right on the edit page to instantly transform any photo or video in your scene uh, with a custom, a uh, true 3D camera movement. In this video, I'm gonna show you uh, what 3D Screen Pro uh, is, how it works, and I'm also gonna go a little bit in depth to uh, what's going on inside Fusion for these effects, because that will give you a much better understanding of how to fine tune the controls you have access to on the edit page uh, to get the exact look you're going for. Let's get started. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. Here I have just a photo and then a video clip, and we're gonna start with this photo. I'll give a little room to work, and because this is a photo, I can resize this, but we are at about that default file Five second length. And here in my effects library, under effects, drilling supply code, I have 3D Screen Pro. Now, one of the things I really like about this pack uh, is these custom thumbnails here. These can quickly demonstrate the move that each preset gives you. So if you look at this uh, screen one option, you see this plane is tilted back and the arrow is moving left to right. And so even if I just preview this, you see, okay, the main picture it is now dropping this on uh, is sort of like tilted back in 3D space and the camera is just moving along left to right. And it's a really cool effect. I can grab that, drop that on my clip, and yeah, it just executes that move. If I was actually using this photo or if this was a video clip of me editing, it would slowly uh, move along the timeline here. And it does that move, you'll notice, uh, over the course of those five seconds. And if I were to increase the length of this clip at all, it would take that much longer uh, to execute that move. It would get at the very end, right at the end of the clip. And where this starts to get pretty wild is when you uh, click that clip, open up the inspector and head over to effects. We have a lot of controls here. Uh, there is some easing on this by default. That's the first control, not as important. Uh, this offset animation is very important. Here you'll have scale, offset, time scale, and time offset. Now, if you're aware at all of some of the more complicated stuff in the Fusion page, uh, these are pulled right from Anim Curves. Anim Curves is a modifier in Fusion. It's complicated, but very, very powerful, and it's what is driving this whole effect. Okay, so it is a uh, few hours later um, because I uh, messed up my recording, but we are we're, we're still going. So let's look at these custom controls. This first preset we are looking at just has this X offset animation section. A lot of these just have one of these sections. Uh, several of them have multiple. We'll be looking at those uh, shortly. And the first thing you have here is scale. And if I am at the beginning of my clip, if I change scale, nothing happens. But if I go to the end of my clip and change scale, then you really see what is going on. This scale is saying, okay, from a starting point, how far do you want to move? And because this is the X offset uh, animation section, it's how far do you want to move on that X offset? So if I only wanted this to end up about like halfway, I could pull that down. And then over the course of this clip, it would execute that move only going to that area. But like I said, that is from uh, a starting point, And that starting point is set by this offset control. If I I come to the beginning of my clip and change that offset you see now we see that reflected and now if i come to about half ish way um, then it will execute that move from that point so it will go even further to the right to about the end of the screen here and under that we have time scale and time offset now these are um there if you need them i think most of the time these will stay at one and zero respectively but let's start with time scale. By default, it is one, which is meaning, okay, it will play this animation completely over the course of this clip. If I change this up to a time scale of two, then it will play that entire animation in double the speed. So it will be done that move about halfway, and then it will just, you know, stay at that second location. But uh, just like that offset was its starting point, we have this time offset, which is a starting point. And this is on a scale from zero to one. So we have this time scale saying, okay, operate this move in half the time. In that instance, I can take this time offset, change that to 0.5. And instead of that dead space at the end of the move, it will be a still for half the time, then kick in, then execute that same move and wrap it up in that second half and perfectly end at the end. Like I said, um, a lot of the times these will just stay at uh, one and zero, but they're there if you want them. And while uh, going over these, I think it can be really useful um, to get a visual idea of what's happening. And we can do that by clicking this button to open the effect in the Fusion page. Uh, here we are, here's our effect as a group of nodes. I can click on that, open it up, and I'm going to preview this Merge 3D node. 
And now you can see this is our super simple setup. We have that image on an image plane and then we have this camera down here. And if I go to those same settings, you see this green line is the path the camera moves. If I come back to the beginning, you see it starts over on this uh, left side then goes over to the right side. If I pull this offset back, you see the entire thing moves over here. If I pull that back here, but then increase the scale, you see that green line gets longer. And while we're here, um, we can jump ahead and look at these image plane controls. While the animation controls uh, affect this camera down here, uh, the image plane controls uh, affect the image plane. So you can change this in 3D space at all, up, down, or uh, back. And you can also add extra rotation if you want this to be uh, at some real funky angle, and then it will still execute that move. Uh, I can jump ahead and preview something else. Uh, I did push it almost completely out of frame, but it's still there. And um, you can always hop back and forth between these, look at something you want, pull it up, pull it back a little closer to frame as well. And then you have that same move with some extra rotation on that. Uh, you also have just like a master scale for how large you want that to be. And then uh, this will be good to demonstrate in 3D as well. Uh, you have uh, this focal length option. Um, if you look at this 3D camera, you see it's sort of projecting this box, and that is the field of view of this camera. So if you pull this down, oh wait, no. If you pull uh, the focal length down, it will get wider, like it's a wider uh, lens, or you pull it up, it's uh, functionally zooming in. And if I preview that um, later, you see it is doing that exact same thing. If I pull it down, it is getting wider, pull it up, it is zooming in. The camera is not moving at all, it's just going like wider or zooming in. Uh, now, if I pull up uh, some of these a little bit more, yeah, something like that. Um, we are gonna look at next depth blur controls. I can toggle that on and we start to see a little of what's going on. Stuff closer is a little bit more in focus, not completely in focus. And this is one control that will actually um, require you to open the effect in the fusion page to set it up, up properly, at least um, using the full features. We do have this sample button here. And this will only work properly if you open this up and actually click on this depth blur node um, and then use the sample as part of that. But it's very cool when you do. You could, you know, tune this in just by eye or by hand by changing the uh, uh, focal uh, point slider. But if you come in, open up, click the depth blur, you can click and hold this slider and just move your mouse to a part of the screen and it will move to have that part completely in focus. As you can see, now the parts that are closer are out of focus, the parts that are further away are out of focus as well and it's just that area, uh, just that focal plane that is in focus. You can toggle that on and off. You have this blur size for how intense you want that blur to be and underneath that you have depth of field and Z scale. Uh, that is pretty much just saying, uh, how quickly does stuff get out of focus? And because we are dealing at, on such a uh, pretty uh, small scale um, with how much this is zoomed in, uh, these are pretty low. You can always uh, fiddle with these if you want to, uh, but I think the default for like the kind of camera moves we're doing here is pretty solid. And then we do have, if I come to the end, we'll see here, uh, this background control. Uh, by default, these all just have a black background on them. You can always uncheck that to make it transparent or you know, just make it any color you want. If you do make it transparent, then um, back on your edit page timeline, if your effects are over any other footage, then you will start to see that footage once that um, uh, slides off screen. This could be a pretty cool transition in its own right, uh, but you know, you've got options. Like I said, we do have 25 presets here to give you a whole bunch of different uh, starting points. Uh, let's look at one more pretty intense one. If I go to 21, uh, we'll see some interesting stuff happening. If I go to effects, we'll see in that animation control, uh, here we have two options. Actually, you know what? Let's go all in. I'm gonna grab 25, drop that on because I know that this one has three sections for inside animation controls, X offset, Y offset, and Y rotation. And if I hop right into Fusion, uh, open that up, look at that merge 3D, we see what is going on if we play through. Again, this green line is the path it follows and it is uh, moving diagonal, so it's moving on the X and Y axis. And if we look at the camera, especially that area it's looking at, we see that is rotating as this moves. So we have those same master controls um, for each of those individual animations. If you wanted it to uh, start entirely a little more to the left, you could change that X offset um, or just pull the scale if you want it to uh, 
you can go further or less further left again on the y offset as well if you want the entire thing up or down or you want it to go further not as far and this wire rotation is pretty interesting um this scale is actually at negative like which is totally fine it will just swing the other way so we see here the camera is starting uh off looking this way and then swings around this way if we want it to be more extreme we just pull this scale down even more at this time and it will pivot that far that much further to the right with a lot of these controls, um, you could build your way into making a lot of these different options look uh, pretty similar, but a big part of the reason I made so many uh, different presets is to give you as close to a final starting point as you can get. I really like this pack, and I think it is a pretty uh, great representation of just how um, useful like these kinds of presets can be, you know, really high utility presets where they aren't some like super flashy effect. Um, all in all, it's a pretty basic effect moving a 3d camera tossing something on a 3d plane but if you're doing it a lot then having these presets and having you know a handful of presets um can really really save you time these are the kind of products that i get um really excited about making and using in resolve my layout pro pack of presets that you know, arranges up to 20 different video clips in frame at once is pretty similar in that it's like very high utility i just did a, a more complete walkthrough video of that as well but i'm happy to do one for 3d screen pro several people have asked i know the animation controls um aren't super awesome obvious on the surface of what they do, but I hope this video is really helpful uh, for those who pick up this pack. A link will be in the description to take you to a uh, store page for 3D Screen Pro. And even if you don't pick that up, I hope this video has demonstrated um, some of the real cool power in Fusion and in Resolve. And I hope you are as excited as I am for this like ecosystem and like all the further development going on all over the place for these cool presets. It's, it's going to be pretty exciting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.